What would you do if confronted with Mother Nature's raw and incredible power? Humanity is often humbled in the rugged terrains, reminded starkly of the futility of trying to tame the wild. A humble 1793 wood cabin, known to early travelers as the Old Notch House, stood witness to both the awe-inspiring beauty and the unpredictable fury of nature. Tragically, its inhabitants were not as fortunate, succumbing to the very forces the cabin endured. In the summer of 18. 26, the dwelling was at the precipice of a catastrophic landslide. The events that unfolded that fateful day are only described as a miraculous twist of fate and a profound tragedy. How did it transpire that the humble dwelling, against all odds, remained unscathed while its occupants met an unforgiving end at the hands of Mother Nature? Welcome to Nightmare House's Mini Tales. The White Mountains, part of the Northern Appalachian Mountains in New Hampshire, boast some of New England's most rugged terrain. This range includes the formidable Mount Washington, rising to 6,288 feet as the highest peak in the northeastern United States, surrounded by over 48 peaks exceeding over 4,000 feet. The landscape is marked by rough, steep terrain featuring rocky slopes, deep ravines, dense forests, and dramatic cliff faces. Known for its harsh climate, especially in higher elevations, the region is exemplified by Mount Washington, notorious for extreme weather conditions and record-breaking wind speeds. In this challenging environment, a hunter named Timothy Nash discovered this White Mountain Notch around 1771, and it was made accessible by 1775, becoming a vital passageway en route to Portland, Maine. In this remote and untamed wilderness, a small log cabin was built in 1793 along the Saco River in the heart of the Notch. Known to early travelers as the Old Notch House, it offered a rare haven amid an inhospitable land. Originally a simple refuge, this cabin, often the sole sign of civilization in the rugged wilderness, gradually became a symbol of hospitality. Architecturally, the Old Notch House embodied the traditional New England colonial style. The rectangular shape, steeply pitched gable roof, and the symmetrical facade reflected the era's functional needs and aesthetic preferences. Flanked by evenly spaced six over six pane windows, the simple, centered entry door allowed for balanced light and ventilation. Clappered wood siding and a sturdy stone foundation, likely using local field stones, were practical choices for the snowy, wet climate. An adjoining single story L served various practical purposes, contrasting the main structure's gabled roof. Over time, the cabin changed. By 1820, it saw renovations and possible expansions, reflecting its growing importance in the region. In 1823, Ethan Crawford, a pioneer in guiding travelers throughout the White Mountains, purchased the cabin, transforming it into a small inn named the Old Notch House, catering to the increasing number of adventurers and merchants navigating the daunting terrain. The Crawford family, as some of the area's first permanent settlers, played a significant role in the development development and history of this landmark. Thus, the Old Notch House, nestled in the shadow of the White Mountains, stood as a testament to human resilience in the face of nature's formidable power. Samuel Wiley IV, born in Bartlett, New Hampshire on March 31, 1788, to Samuel Wiley III and Elizabeth Glazier Wiley, led a life marked by a pioneer spirit. After marrying Polly Lovejoy on September 17, 1812, they had five children, Eliza Ann, Jeremiah Lovejoy, Martha Glazier, Elbridge Jerry, and Sarah Sally Wiley. In the fall of 1825, seeking new opportunities, Samuel moved his family to the Old Notch House in the White Mountains to manage the inn for the Crawfords. With the help of two local men, David Allen and David Nicholson, the Wileys expanded and improved the inn, making it a welcoming stop for travelers. However, the harsh nature of the mountains soon revealed itself. In 1826, a severe drought hit northern New England, followed by a period of heavy rains. The Wileys, alarmed by a minor landslide in June, prepared a cave near their home for shelter in case of a more significant event. Their fears came true in late August, when one of the most violent rainstorms ever recorded hit the region. 
The powdery, drought-weakened soil on the mountainside gave way, unleashing a massive landslide that tore through the valley. The Saco River rose over 20 feet, flooding farms and sweeping away everything in its path. On that fateful night, around 11 p.m., the Wiley family was likely awakened by the terrifying sounds of a landslide. In a panic, they fled their home, seeking refuge in the shelter Samuel had constructed earlier that summer. However, fate played a cruel twist. While the family ran into the storm's fury, their home, protected by a natural barrier of rock projections, remained untouched. A traveling merchant navigating the storm's aftermath encountered the scene days later. The old notch house stood eerily intact, with evidence inside suggesting a hasty departure. Tragically, the entire Wiley family and the two men were missing. A search party, including the Crawford family and other locals, soon discovered the grim reality. The bodies of Samuel, age 38, Polly, age 35, Eliza, age 12, Sally, age 4, David Allen, age 40, and David Nicholson, age 20, were found as victims of the landslide's merciless path. Three Wiley children, Jeremiah, age 11, Martha, age 9, and Elbridge, age 6, were never found, presumably lost forever to the mountain's wrath. Ironically, had the family remained inside their home, they would have survived the disaster. It's speculated that Samuel, vigilant throughout the stormy night, evacuated his family when he believed the landslide would destroy their home. They all fled into the landslide's direct path in a tragic misjudgment. Following the tragedy, news of the Wiley family and the house swiftly spread across newspapers and guidebooks, igniting a mix of fascination and horror. The tale of a home that outlasted its occupants amidst such irony and tragedy swiftly became one of America's earliest sites for morbid curiosity. Within months, tourists flocked to what is now known as Crawford Notch, eager to see the house and the scars left by the landslide. This influx of visitors spurred the growth of tourism in the White Mountains. The mountain above the Wiley House, rising 4,285 feet, was fittingly named Mount Wiley, a name it still bears. Ethan Crawford, owner of the Wiley's cabin, recognized the potential in this newfound attention. Despite losing much of his property in the landslide, he swiftly ensured that the Wiley House was well signposted for visitors. By 1828, he had built a new hotel, the Notch House. The site's fame attracted many notable figures, including Ralph Waldo Emerson, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Henry David Thoreau, and Daniel Webster, who drew inspiration from the event and its dramatic setting. In 1828, artist Thomas Cole, a prominent figure in the Hudson River School art movement, visited and was moved by the contrast of the small house against the backdrop of destruction. He painted distant view of the slides that destroyed the Wiley family, a work now lost but remembered through lithographic reproductions. In literature, the Wiley tragedy inspired Nathaniel Hawthorne, who was then a burgeoning author. In 1835, he published The Ambitious Guest, a short story that, while altering some details, echoed the fate of the Wiley family. Hawthorne's narrative added a fictional guest, symbolizing the ephemeral nature of life and the desire for a lasting legacy, further amplifying the tragedy's impact on American culture. As the 19th century progressed, the White Mountains became a premier tourist destination, in part due to the allure of the Wiley disaster. The area saw construction of numerous grand hotels, including the Wiley Hotel, built by Horace Fabian in 1845, adjacent to the original cabin. This new hotel, standing three stories tall and accommodating 50 guests, signified the area's transformation from a site of tragedy to a hub of tourism. By the 1860s and 1870s, the physical evidence of the landslide had largely faded, but the Wiley House remained an important landmark. In 1875, recognizing its historical significance, the Anne Stickney chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution erected a marker near the site to commemorate the fateful event in 1826. The surge in tourism led to remarkable engineering feats, including the construction of railroads throughout the challenging terrain of Crawford Notch. In 1875, the Anderson Brothers of Maine introduced a railway that connected Portland to the growing tourist centers, including the Fabens Hotel, marking a new era in the region's accessibility and popularity. But as the 1880s dawned, the Wiley tragedy, once a tale that gripped the nation, faded into history. 
the relentless forces of nature gradually obscured the scars left by the landslide, and public fascination with the Wiley House declined. Ownership of the property changed hands, and in May 1899, it was sold to H.C. Dudley. However, just months later, on September 26, 1899, a fire attributed to a defective chimney consumed the historic building, erasing the physical reminder of the early American home. Yet paradoxically, the destruction of the Wiley House reignited public interest. Once again, a focal point of curiosity, the site became a renewed tourist destination at the dawn of the 20th century. This resurgence in attention also sparked a debate about conservation and ownership in the region. In response, the New Hampshire legislature passed a bill in 1912 to preserve the northern region from excessive timber harvesting. The state acquired nearly 6,000 acres for $62,000, extending across both sides of the highway to the summits bordering the Saco River. By 1913, most of Crawford Notch was state-owned, becoming part of the Crawford Notch Forest Reservation. In 1922, two entrepreneurs from Bartlett leased the site, developing a cabin colony from peeled spruce logs to accommodate tourists. Additional facilities, including restrooms, a restaurant, and a gift shop, were added, but by the 1940s, the state reclaimed the area for its conservation efforts. Today, the New Hampshire State Park Service manages the property, preserving both the region's natural beauty and the legacy of the Wiley family. The tale of the Wiley family's fate in 1826 continues to fascinate visitors. In 2015, a young man, Colin McNeely, had a quest to find the family's final resting place that led him to the North Conway Library. With assistance, he located the Wiley Family Cemetery, a solemn site with about 20 grave markers, including a monument for those lost in the landslide. To respect its sanctity, the cemetery's location remains undisclosed, safeguarding the dignity of the Wiley family's story. Today, the Old Notch and Wiley House site, marked by a modest stone monument, is a poignant symbol of the often unpredictable and tragic interplay between humanity and nature. It serves as a reminder of that fateful night in late August 1826, a testament to nature's indifferent might and the resilience of human memory. The Crawford Notch State Park, encompassing the site, invites visitors to reflect on the delicate balance of existence in the face of nature's over overwhelming forces. The original house may be long gone, but its story, a blend of tragedy and endurance, remains integral to the local lore and continues to draw interest. The nearby visitor center, serving as the state park's headquarters, provides a gateway for those looking to explore this historic and natural wonder. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the haunting legacy of the Wiley House and for listening to Nightmare House's Mini Tales. For more information, including photos and references, please visit www.nightmarehouses.com. Until next time, goodbye.